afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Conal O'Reilly, and I'm a solution architect at SmartLink. And I'm joined by Kostya Grishak, who is a member of our development team and who's worked specifically on SmartLink vehicle integration. Um, we're going to cover three things in this session. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about SmartLink, just by way of background, tell you a little, in case you're not familiar with what SmartLink is, tell you a little bit about what we do. Um, then talk about weather.com and uh, a little bit of the, their story and how they're using SmartLink today. And, and then I'm going to turn it over to Kostya and he's going to talk about what we're doing is, uh, in uh, Drupal 8, so the, the work that we're actively engaged in now and, and looking forward. Um, so with that, oh, first of all, uh, if you want a presentation on that, there's a short link to it, I'll leave it there for a second. And just to mention as well that um, SmartLing has a booth in the downstairs at um, minute 304. Uh, so a little bit about SmartLing. SmartLing is a, a, a cloud-based um, software platform for managing the workflow around translation, human translation for the most part. We, we do integrate with machine translation, but it, it's mainly a platform to tackle the challenges that traditionally plague the business of translating uh, content and applications. Um, if any of you have ever been involved in translation projects, you've probably got some horrible memories uh, associated with it. Because usually there's copying and pasting involved. There's usually uh, you know, putting stuff into spreadsheets, emailing spreadsheets uh, to translation providers. They, in turn, email them on to translators. Uh, the translator has to do their work with a big list of words and no context um, of where the content will actually live. So they end up making mistakes or doing poor translations. And there's a, a, a you know, the, the process around fixing those is slow, laborious, error prone. Um, and it, it's slow and it's uh, costly as well, and it's kind of painful for everyone involved. Um, SmartLing addresses this traditional mess by providing a single platform that everyone involved in the process logs into and uses. So on the company side, project managers uh, log into SmartLing and manage the content and see what's going on. On the translator side, the translator also logs in. Uh, we provide great tools to the translator in terms of visual context so that we can see the work that they're doing and where the work that they live. It allows them to get good translations first time. Um, we manage translation memory. Uh, a lot of the things that you know are the kind of state of the art of translation work, so they're all available in the platform. And in addition to that, and, and a bit more relevant to the, the Drupal conversations, we also provide methods of integrating with places where content comes from. So development systems, content management systems. Um, so instead of developers having to copy and paste stuff into spreadsheets, SmartLing automatically collects the content and just removes that, um, that from, from the picture. So, uh, so that's, that's kind of what we do. We have this, um, uh, as I mentioned, cloud base. So it's a, a browser-based interface. Uh, different people logging in see different views depending on their role. Content's coming in automatically. Um, translators work in this platform as well. Um, and then through the same platform we, we provide. Well, actually, what I'll do is I've, I've highlighted, I don't want to, this is not about SmartLing, it's more about the, uh, the integration work with, with Drupal, but I have a couple of features that I'm just going to quickly go through to, to give you a better feel for what SmartLing is about. Um, and then we'll switch to talking about weather. Um, one of them is, I mentioned this uh, context idea, so that what we try to do in SmartLing is, in addition to supplying the content to the translator to work on, we also give them the visual context that they'll ultimately live in. So if it's on a web page, they'll see that actual web page. If it's describing a product, they'll see the product, and so can, can do a high quality translation first time. In addition to that, um, they, as they do their work, they'll see the translation appear in the content as well. So if, if, if the translation is going to introduce any layout issues, they have a better chance of spotting them right off the bat as opposed to seeing them you know, in some QA cycle weeks or months later. Um, 
so that's a little glimpse of, of the in-context interface in smart link. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. The, they also have in this interface um, translation memory so that anything that's previously been translated, they'll have access to it in this interface. They'll be prompted um, that this has previously been translated and it allows for, for faster um, Switching to a completely different thing, there's another um, capability that Smartling has is uh, what we call the GDN in the old world. This is a proxy-based approach to translating websites or web content. So if you didn't want to do the translations and manage the translations at your site, um, we can instead, let's say, read your site in whatever language it's in, let's say your, your source site is in English, through this proxy, the way translation would work is when somebody requests a translated version of your website, the request would actually go through the Smartling proxy, Smartling would go to your English site, load the English page, and then substitute in all the translations. And this happens really fast uh, and really uh, in a scalable way as well. So this, for example, is, it, we've got some, some very wet, large websites that are using this approach to translation. But it's only one approach. We maybe half our customers do do things this way, and the other half do the translation at source using approaches like um, our Google Connector, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, I'll just mention one last thing. There's there's a lot of things we we could uh, we could highlight. Um, this is just a recent thing, so I picked it out as well. Sometimes when a translator needs context, there's no HTML context available, but there's maybe a screenshot or, or a design from a designer that, that exists as a, an image. Um, and so we also have the ability, lots of different approaches to getting context in, uh, but this is a new one we added recently where if you, if you load an image into SmartLink, it will automatically um, do OCR on the image and extract all of the content to be translated. Um, so that, that's just a, a, another example of the, the kinds of things that, um, that we provide for translators in the platform. So switching to, to the weather story, um, in 2014, weather.com was based on, uh, you probably know that they're the largest trafficked, trafficked Drupal-based uh, website in the world. They, they have over a billion uh, page views a, a month, I believe. Um, so it's a very, very, very large site. Uh, and the way it used to work was it was based on uh, Java framework uh, and all of the content was stored in Java properties files and the process by which they translated this content into other languages was exactly the one that I was describing at the beginning. They had members of their development team uh, literally going through these property files and copy, copying content and pasting it into spreadsheets which then were emailed off to translation agencies. And this is how the translation process happened and this is a common process actually, even though it seems so old school. Um, so that, that's the way they were doing things then. Uh, it was very slow. Um, it was uh, expensive. They had a, a good number, half a dozen developers that spent a good portion of their time on this type of work, which that's an expensive use of, of your developers. Um, and, and so they embarked on a process of changing this. Uh, in, in 2014, they re-architected uh, the weather.com. Oh, one thing I didn't mention as well is that whole copy-paste thing that was repeated multiple times for different uh, environments. So the, the Angular app, the, the Windows app, the iPhone app, all of these went through the same process in many times with exactly the same content. So it was rerun multiple times, also adding to the cost of the whole thing. So they went through a re-architecture process of their English site, uh, changed it to be based on um, the Angular mods, so Drupal, and then the Angular mods in Drupal, and um, did that for English. And, and what you see here is, is a, the, the new version of their site as of, I guess it would have been, it came out in late 2014, the English version. And then they said, we, we want now to, we need to update our internationalization process. So the international sites were all still on the old approach with the copying and pasting and everything. And so they went through an evaluation process to, to choose a, a translation management platform. They ended up choosing Smartling um, for 
many of the things I spoke about earlier, but also because we, we have a, an integration with Drupal, um, which they started to use. They, they had some additional requirements, which are shown here um, because of their particular custom uh, way of using the Angular of, of, of mods that they, um, that was not something we initially supported out of the box, so we did some custom development to allow them to translate that type of content from Drupal. They also had a requirement to um, allow uh, translation submissions to happen from multiple different environments so that um, a developer's Drupal environment, for example, could be used as a source for content to send for translation. Um, but once the translations were complete, they could be downloaded into other uh, environments, so download them to a production Drupal instance, for example. Um, so that was kind of a new flow as well, which it, traditionally in, in when we're connected with um, content management systems like that, usually the translations go back to the same system that they originated from. So this was a new requirement from Drupal and one that we were able to meet with um, some modifications on our side. So. Um, this is an example of what that interface looks like in Drupal. Uh, we have connectors for uh, a variety of different content management platforms. They all they, they all look more like the platform, so th this should look like a Drupal interface. But the flow, the content flow, is largely the same. So you can see on the left, um, it's been filtered, allows you to search for the content that you want to translate. It's been filtered to this. Uh, weekend forecast app. Um, you select that, you s press the translate button, and that, and then you're you're led to this page where you can choose uh, the languages. Um, you can see where the Hans is a very large set of languages that you're translating into, um, but it gives you the option to spec to choose a subset of languages if a particular application, say, is only available in certain countries. Um, so the flow is simple. You you find the content, you search for the content, press the translate button and choose your languages and off it goes. And once the translations, and so w once it goes into Smartling then, translators are notified that content is available for translation, they'll immediately log in and start working on it, and you have fast turnaround um, time on the translations. When the translations are complete, they're automatically downloaded and incorporated into the, the right place. In addition to that type of flow, there's also this, uh, kind of a, a status view that allows you to see at a glance the, the progress on all of the translations that have been submitted from Drupal into Smartling. Um, these, this particular screenshot happens to show all 100%, but you know, it's more typically you'd see varying uh, percentages along the right here. Um, you can see the languages listed as well, the different types of content. Once the, you have the ability to download translations manually, but the, the more typical flow, particularly for a large site, is you just let them come back in automatically um, whenever they're ready. That's, that's the way this would work. So they've been, uh, whether they've successfully implemented this, they, they went from a world where it was taking them a long time to translate and they were using half a dozen developers in, in managing the process and it was very error prone um, to a process where they can simultaneously deploy into more than 35 languages. Um, they don't need any developer resources, so it's just content. People can, can manage this from the Drupal interface. Um, you know, they've got they've some examples of the, the particular app on the left in English translated into various languages, Chinese, right to left languages represented there as well, Arabic. Um, the other thing that they get from this, the content coming from all of the different applications is they get this very high translation memory leverage. So once they're, you know, if they've translated content for their iPhone app, there's a lot of the same content in, in Android. So that will, that can, skip the translation process completely if they, if they choose. So there's a configurability around how th what they want to do with translation memory matches, but that's something where it, it makes the whole translation process faster and more consistent and, all, uh, and a lot cheaper too, because you're reusing translations that have been, have been done before. And they're using this submit from multiple places and download into different environments process as well. So they're really 
they view it as a great success that they're now able to do translation work in a, in a kind of an agile, it fits into, they were shifting to a more agile development model and this kind of approach to managing their content and translations fits now nicely into that agile development model. So that's, I'll, I'll stop here and just say, ask if there are any questions at this point. Actually, and correct me, so the question was, uh, content can be created on staging and then it'll be sent to production. So the normal flow with a Smartling connector is it would be, if it was created on staging, then the translations would go back to staging and you would manage yourself to push it to production in the appropriate way. But this also supports a model where the translations or the content is created on staging, pushed to production pushed to Smartling and when the translations are complete, they can be downloaded directly into the production environment. Any other questions? Okay, so at this point then, so that, everything we've spoken about so far is based on Drupal 7. Um, we're also very actively uh, working on Drupal 8 um, and Koska is the man doing the work. So. He's going to tell you a little bit about um, the work we're doing on Drupal 8. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, so uh, first about TMDMT, and I'd like to say that we decided to uh, go fully with TMDMT as our default Drupal 8 solution uh, for the integration. It was somewhat hard decision, you, you know, uh, as we did this, this, this decision after DrupalCon New Orleans and some internal discussions. But by that time, we already had release candidate one of our custom plugin in integration for Drupal 8. Uh, so we already spent quite a effort uh, for that. But anyway, we decided to switch to TMGMT, and uh, there were several reasons to do so. And let me share th those reasons w with you. Uh, the first re reason was that uh, it, it is a well-tested module we, with a big community and uh, even at this point uh, the core is really well tested. Uh, the second one is that uh, after the active de development phase uh, I it has really nice APIs that allow flexible extension of the TMGMT module and that we could use to implement the needed features. And the third one is that we truly believe that we can not only successfully use this uh, module for the integration, but we think that we can bring in some new features that everyone can benefit from. And, and before I continue, I'd like to say, say thanks to all the TMGM team maintainers that put their hard work into this module. You know, having written the module with similar functionality for both Drupal 7 and Drupal 8, uh, we think that we can really imagine what a big and great piece of work it is. And so we, we would really like to thank uh, the maintainers for all their hard work and that they made th these our decisions happen. Uh, and now uh, a few words uh, about the state of uh, our own custom TMGMT smartling plugin. So right now it's production ready. Uh, it allows you to implement all the basic uh, manipulations with, with content. You can upload the content to SmartLink and download the translation back. Uh, but right now we're working on a new really cool feature for Drupal 8, which is called tr translation context. And Connell mentioned uh, this feature in his part uh, of the presentation. So soon translators in Drupal 8 will be able to immediately see how they tr their translation looks uh, on the real side. We do this by capturing the actual HTML uh, of the page and sending it to SmartLink and then showing the actual HTML of, of the page in inside, inside the SmartLink dashboard. And that's why how it happened internally. And this feature might be really useful, for example, for German lan language. This language is known for uh, really lo long words and sometimes uh, these long words can't fit into certain parts of the page. 
So in, instead of going through the whole loop of the te testing pr process after you downloaded the translation back, then you go uh, like give resize to your testers, and they uh, mark a bug that some string doesn't fit. Now they can easily see it right away, and translator can try to split his translation into several sm smaller words, and so it w would look nice in the UI. So uh, when w while working on the integration with weather.com and their amount of, bo of both content and locales, we learned several important languages uh, while working with them. And we think that we uh, could bring uh, these important lessons to the TMGMT ecosystem. And in order to do so, we started the new project we called TMGMT Extension Suite. It's a module on Drupal.org. Uh, Right now it's not yet production ready, it's more like a work in progress, but I think it will be worth checking uh, by the end of this year. It's also w worth me mentioning that we see this project as a vendor agnostic tool, uh, so hopefully anyone who is using TMGMT uh, may benefit fr from this project. Uh, and now uh, uh, I'll tell you about a story uh, of how would you translate actually the site using TMGMT and hopefully uh, our new extension. Yeah, so uh, imagine uh, that you, you've got a, a customer that you created a, a site for, and the, this customer is called Fantastic. And uh, so you, you created a site for him, he was happy with the site, and he, he noticed that, that the site started to bring in new business. And so the customer decided to go multilingual and try a new locale on the site. In order to uh, fulfill this requirement, you install the usual TMGMT mo mo module on the site and create all the translation jobs, send it to the translator provider of your choice, and in approximately a, in a week, when all, all the translations happened, you expect the content to uh, return to, to your site. But that, that doesn't happen. And uh, during the debug, you find out that the reason for that is that you use the dev environment of your site in order to, to be able to test the translation afterwards. And it appears that you, you use the HTTP authentication on your site, and thus uh, this site is not available outside. And so the default me mechanism for pulling the translation back for, for the site uh, and in TMGM GMT module is the uh, download callback, it doesn't work because the servers uh, of your provider can't reach the site. And you really, in, in this situation, you don't have like many options to choose. You would need to go inside uh, each job, the translation job on the site that you have, and one by, by one click the download button manually uh, to get the translation back. Uh, what we see we, we could improve here is to actually improve the integration between the TMGMT module and the VBO module that could live together. And essentially, uh, we think that uh, the download action and re-upload action would be really helpful, helpful in such cases as I've just described. There are also some other ca uh, actions like the cancel job and so, like the, the delete, delete job, I believe, but we think that uh, the uh, kind of content managing uh, actions are, are the vital here. And so some, some time passes and uh, we, you know, we live in a rapidly changing world and some content of your client becomes outdated. So he, wants to fix this situation, he goes to the site and changes the content. And now you need, as a developer, to update translation. Right now, in order to do so in TMGMT, you've got two options to do so. Uh, the first one is you can create new jobs and send them again for translation and then don't download them back and then you will have the translation. And the second option uh, is the pretty much new feature in TMGMT that is called continuous translation. This feature uh, allows you to 
configure a bundle that will be automatically sent for translation and then download it back. And the issue with such uh, approach as we see it is that you, uh, you no long longer be able to select which nodes or other uh, co pieces of content you want to tr translate inside this bundle and which you don't. So for example, if you got the bundle article, yeah, the node article or the basic page, and you want to translate some, some of the, the, those pages and others you want to leave not translated, for now you, like, this is not the option. And what we implemented in Drupal 7 and uh, right now working on in Drupal 8 is the tracking changes on, on a per node, node basis. Per job, sorry, per job basis. So if any piece of content inside a job was changed, we will uh, catch the moment when it was changed and uh, upload it, re-upload re it again to the translation provider so the translation could be updated immediately. Yeah, and, and, and finally, we, in some time, if everything goes well w with your fantastic customer and his business grows, he may want to go truly multilingual and add, I don't know, six more locales to his site, right? And right now TMGMT allows only to uh, create job on a per one locale base. So, uh, in this case, you would need to go to your uh, site administrative interface and create all the jobs that you created for, for the first language. You would need to recreate them for each new locale. And it might be kind of tiresome. There is actually a, the cards feature in, in the TMGMT module where you could select multiple lo locales for your job but after you, you select them, you would need to click through the uh, through all the job creation process. So if you got six locales, then you would need to click through six forms for each locale to, to create a job for, for each locale. And, and instead, we will we will work on making this process more, more transparent and allow to create create all those jobs uh, from from a single page. Yeah. So uh, this is our basic road roadmap for the nearest future. Our top three features and everything else will be prioritized after we implement uh, these ones. It's a matter, as I said we would expect it to be more or less finished by the end of, of this year. A and maybe after that, we would uh, bring in some queues that we had in Drupal 7 or URL, URL rights where uh, inside, for example, your body field, you've got some uh, URLs that link from one page to another uh, or, or the images, the link, links to the images. And the common use case is that when you want to localize those images, so I instead of one HTML link I inside the body field, you would like to uh, link it to some other place. And sorry, and this transformation should happen according to some rules. And so in Drupal 7, we provided some APIs that would uh, allow this feature and that is definitely somewhere on our roadmap, uh, but again, somewhere in the future. So uh, I think that's it from my side. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, please ask them. I may also mention that we like finished a bit early, but we, we we thought that we would have only 30 minutes for this presentation and only recently we got to know that it will be the, the full hour, so questions are, are really welcome. Th thank you for your attention.
No, 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 we don't plan to back for it for triple seven as we got it. I think so. It has uh, even though the development of the sand essentially ceased. Uh, so it's like more of the client request based. So, so if, uh, if some of our clients want, so we don't have right now the active roadmap for Drupal seven, but we've got some incoming requests from our customers. And if we do, we, we do so, then, then we prioritize them and, and give them some resources to see them implement. The, for me, the, the, you talked about the brother and Joe and the brother. Mm -hmm. so are, are, they, are they on 8 in Drupal? No, they, they're on Drupal 7. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm not sure about their plans uh, towards Drupal 8. But as, uh, as far as I know, they, they are, uh, the media card fr framework they, they sit on was a involved a lo lots of work so maybe they, they won't be like the early board for Drupal 8 adoption at least So basically we've got clients that, uh, at least in Drupal 7, use both our plugins and workbench work moderation, and essentially we don't implement the state of, of the workbench. So for, for us, uh, if you are talking about uh, in the tracking changes, right, feature, yeah. uh, and there, so there we in no way uh, like deal with the state of the workbench moderation, for us, the final sta state of, of the original content is the one w where the, like the admin of the site or the content editor first uploaded some piece of content, content to Smarten. So before it happened, we do not track, ch track changes for this piece of content. But after the first uh, uplo upload, uh, we think that we should uh, get to know about the updates on the content as soon as we can. Essentially, if, for example, the some piece of content was uh, uploaded to Smartlink, and, and then uh, some error was found it was found uh, in those piece of content and quickly fixed, and it can happen that tr translator didn't even start to translate the, this node, so uh, this way we will be able to fix uh, the, the typo before, before the translation and so the client won't need to, to pay uh, for that translation. Does that, does that answer your, your question? So uh, the question is, uh, is the translation context something spe specific to, to us or is it uh, sits in the uh, extension suite? So the, the, the answer is that it is sp specific for our uh, con connector and the reason for this is that uh, it is not only the Drupal side, so the co code on the Drupal side, but uh, these are pretty much specific APIs on the server side. and a bunch of the communications between uh, our servers and, and Drupal before we actually gather the, the whole page together and uh, so it could be properly di displayed for, for the translator and we've got some doubts that other uh, like providers can easily implement the, the same server APIs so this could be useful for them. But uh, on the other uh, hand, you know, uh, all of our code is open source, it lives on drupal.org, so if any um, LSP thinks that uh, they can implement the same uh, feature on, on their side, they can easily uh, just fork out our code or like gra grab the needed piece from our co code, look 
how we implemented it and use it for their own benefit. So the question is, uh, why did we go with a separate project rather than Kaktan Frisian to a TMJMT? And the answer is that we wanted to stay uh, more agile here, and uh, I think you can think of this module as the experimental module for Drupal 8 core. Uh, so you know the TMJMT uh, module has lots of stakeholders, and people that, that are dependent uh, on it. And so there might be I even some argue on, on how should it better implement the integration be between VBO and TMGMT, and it can take some time. So we decided to uh, that it might be better for everyone for us to imp implement it more or less quickly and then share it with everyone else and, and then di discuss the, the existing implementation rather than uh, some theoretical maybe uh, approaches on how to do it better. In, in which one? So, it so well, in, 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 in how Swarmable is influenced apparently, right? Like it's just not a paid service or a paid module, right? And, and now, now Swarmable is a module, right? It's not a module that inherently requires a, you know, a subscription, mm -hmm. right? And so, uh, do you think there are limits to, you know, how the end user might have issue management? Is, you know, how what your product is going to be, how you would be able to influence that stuff when it's only going to be a subset? So yes. So the question is, uh, how will uh, SmartLink influence the TMGMT module? Uh, I, I think that the answer here is that well, first of all, a TMGMT module has I think really really strong stakeholders in by the MD Systems company, which is really huge. Yeah, like the second yeah they're, they're second contrib contributor. Uh, they have a really nice view uh, of where th they're going, and uh, I think th their opinion is definitely not easy to, to influence. In some way, we can only, in a way, help and add something that that we think I is important. So, um, from what we see, maybe we could add a little bit in terms of improving the UI and helping to translate the big sites with a lot of con uh, content as uh, we usually deal wi with that type of customers a and usually the companies that uh, use SmartLink with Drupal usually Drupal is only one source of content uh, in, in their platform so usually it's something else, and as we have such type of customers, uh, I think this is where you might expect our help and involvement in uh, developing and TMGMT. I think that's that's the answer. Your sure. I mean, of course. Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I, I think there's definitely room for scale to be had. Um, you know, it, it, it's really hard to solve a broader problem. Yeah, uh, and 
Yeah, uh, and, and I think uh, another nice thing is in the current situation is that right now uh, we, uh, uh, before like the smart uh, connector in Drupal 7, it was our custom solution that uh, we only were responsible for, for. But right now, if some of our customers, for example, want some new feature, we can ask them if it's appropriate maybe to send some resources as now it's like not, not only our custom solution but everyone can benefit from and if they they, they are willing to we, we can propose them to contribute to actual open source that uh, others may benefit from uh, not sure how well, well will it go as we are only at the start of our path here uh, but that's uh, at least an option So, okay, thank you everyone for, for your attention.